Hey everybody, it's Craig with Smartphone India. We got a great face off for you today. The Motorola Atrix 4G versus Apple's iPhone 4, both currently being offered by AT&T. Now make sure you stop by SmartphoneEnvy.com, check out the written review and winner of today's face off, along with some photos and videos taken by both the Atrix 4G and iPhone 4. All right, let's kick off our face off. Motorola's Atrix 4G, quad band GSM, tri band 3G, AT&T's new 4G connectivity, weighs in at 137 grams, build quality, Gorilla Glass, sides of the phone are metal, and then you've got the battery cover which wraps all the way around the top and bottom to the front of the display, it's made out of a rubberized plastic, it's a graphite in color, lower left hand corner is the phone speaker, up above that on the left hand side near the top is the camera. Up on top is a 3.5mm headphone jack along with the power and lock key which is also the fingerprint reader. Right hand side is the volume rocker. Got nothing on the bottom and on the left hand side HDMI port as well as a micro USB port. Alright Apple's iPhone 4. Quad band GSM, quad band 3G, no 4G connectivity. Weighs in at 137 grams so it's the heavier of the two by two whole grams. Build quality, you've got composite glass front and back. Nice Apple logo on the back as well as camera in the upper left hand corner. You've got the metal rim that encompasses the entire phone itself. On the bottom is a speaker, microphone and port for charging, syncing and transferring data. On the left hand side your volume buttons up and down as well as the mute key. On top 3.5mm headphone jack along with the power and lock key. And on the right hand side is the cover for the SIM card slot. All right, cameras. Atrix 4G offers a 5 megapixel camera with autofocus, dual LED flash, geotagging, as well as image stabilization, and video capture is 720p. On the iPhone 4, 5 megapixel camera with autofocus, LED flash, also offers touch focus as well as geotagging. Video capture again is 720p. As far as batteries, I believe the Atrix 4G is the largest battery in a smartphone to date. It's got a 1930 milliamp hour battery rated at 9 hours of talk time. iPhone 4, no slouch, has a 1420 milliamp battery and it's rated at 7 hours of talk time. All right, let's take a look at the displays. Come back to me here. There we go. Let's get them both home. All right, the Atrix 4G has a QHD capacitive touch display, four inches in size, shows 540 by 960 pixels, offers an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, as well as multi-touch. Above the display, upper left, you've got a front-facing camera for video calls. Below the display, you have four touch-sensitive keys from left, main menu key, home key, back key, as well as search key iPhone 4, 3.5 inch retina capacitive touch display showing 640 by 960 pixels. Again, it offers an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, as well as multi touch. Also, has a three axis gyro sensor. Upper left, again, you have a front facing camera for video calls. You have one physical key below the display, the home key. As far as memory, the Atrix 4G, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, one gigabyte of RAM. Internal storage can be expanded an additional 32 gigabytes to the use of a micro SD card. iPhone 4 comes in two versions, 16 and 32 gigabytes. Also has 512 megabytes of RAM. Both offer Wi-Fi, 802.11bGNN. The Atrix 4G also has support for DLNA. Both have Bluetooth version 2.1 with support for A2DP. Both have GPS and offer AGPS. The Atrix 4G can be used as a Wi-Fi hotspot, the iPhone 4 no, although that's coming soon. Processor on the Atrix 4G is NVIDIA's dual core Tegra 2 1 GHz processor. On the iPhone 4 is Apple's A4 1 GHz processor. Operating system on the Atrix 4G is Android 2.2 Froyo with Motorola's Moto Blur UI. And on the iPhone 4 is iOS 4.2.1. Let's do our YouTube comparison between the iPhone 4, which is on top, and the Atrix 4G just below it. Got both of them running off the same Wi-Fi network, and I have the Atrix 4G set to default on default to HQ. And we're off. So basically, we're looking to see who will load this quicker and also give you an opportunity to look at the quality of the displays.
All right, there's a look at one. I've tried to get the displays. They're both set on automatic brightness, and I try to get them as close to the same as possible. And again, nobody's perfect. Let's take the annoying orange for a second. We're off. So anyway, there's a look at our YouTube comparison over Wi-Fi. All right, let's run our unofficial speed test. And you can see on the iPhone 4, I've cleared and closed down all of the uh, applications running in the background, and I've got as much closed down on the Atrix 4G as I can. Let's start this off with Gmail. That seemed to be the Atrix 4G. That was definitely the Atrix 4G. Camera. That was actually the Atrix 4G. The camera seemed to open earlier on the iPhone 4, but it didn't actually, wasn't ready to shoot. Let's try Maps. I believe that was the iPhone 4. Let's try opening up Settings on both. That was definitely the Atrix 4G. And let's go to Flickster. And that was the iPhone 4 by a lot. And let's see who can handle loading the movies the best. Uh, movies loaded first on the... Let's run... Um, let's see who can load the video quicker. My guess is the way it's been running the iPhone 4. Well... Pretty close. We've got the Atrix 4G has got it up and running first. Here we go. All right, there's a look at our unofficial speed test between the Atrix 4G and iPhone 4. Here comes the iPhone 4. I'll let that run just for a second so you can see the quality. All right, what do you say we do a little navigating on the Atrix 4G and iPhone 4, and we'll start out with the Atrix 4G. Navigate to Corner Bakery. I know, someplace completely different. What we should get back from our suggestion is voice-guided turn-by-turn navigation. Once the GPS locks on. Head southeast on Cuffing Way toward La Venta Road. Then turn left at La Venta Road. All right. Seem to handle that quite well. We'll put that on mute because I know she'll start talking as soon as I start moving around the map. We're in satellite view. Double tap to zoom in. Multi-touch also works. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Scroll around and see how well it redraws, refocuses. Don't seem to be having any trouble at all. Pinch to zoom, get a little further. Let's see how quickly it redraws that. That's going to take a second. There it comes. All right. So the Atrix 4G seemed to do quite well. All right, let's head into Maps on our iPhone 4, and we'll go in for a search. And we'll type in corner. I can't see that, so hopefully it's right. C O R N corner. Corner bakery. Let's search. Should show up. There it is. That's the one we want. We'll go to directions. And we'll hit route. And once it gets the GPS set up, we've got our route, and we can either get directions via car, bus, or walk. They both offer the same. We'll hit start, and you'll notice that we've got our route right up here at the top. And as we progress, it gives us our turn-by-turn -turn 
instructions on how to get over to Corner Bakery. Take a look at the map. Again, multi-touch, double tap, very smooth. Let's give it the big test. We'll pull way out, see how it redraws. Both about the same, both very quick. I think the Atrix seemed a little quicker at redrawing, but I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Anyway, both of them did very well on navigating. The big advantage the Atrix 4G offers out of the box. Voice guided turn-by-turn -turn navigation through Google Maps.